Hi, I'm Rick Jones, and I want to tell you about how our products work. Think of this as sort of like a video manual. I'm going to use the Coda 2 channel as the demonstrator, and we'll walk through all of the functions of the amplifier and also the speaker cabinet, and uh, where there are uh, differences between this and other models like the 10-2 or the Claris, we'll point those out. Let's start with the rear panel where the uh, power inlet and uh, power switch is located. First thing to note is the uh, line voltage switch. The amplifier will operate from 100 volts up to 250 volt AC input. You want to make sure this switch is in the right position. For the 100 to 120 volt range, put it in the 115 volt position. And for uh, 200 volts up to 250 volts, put it in the uh, uh, 230 volt position. The thing you need to know is if you uh, put 230 volts into this with it set in the 115 volt position, the amp will be damaged. So make sure that you get it in the right spot. The power cord attaches here. This is a typical computer type power cord. Uh, if uh, we, su we supply you with one, but if you lose it, uh, you'll be able to replace it with a uh, simple computer type cord that you can buy at uh, an electronics store. The on off switch is uh, on the rear. It's on in the down position. The fuse is located inside this uh, module right here. To get at the fuse, you pry this drawer out. And the fuse is located inside. And a spare fuse is included in the drawer. So you're carrying a spare fuse with you all the time. So let's take a look at the preamp function. I'm using a two-channel preamp. Uh, I'm going to use something called pink noise to demonstrate the functions of the preamp. Pink noise is a signal that has all frequencies in it at equal power. Contrast that to a, uh, uh, a, sim a simple sine wave signal, which only has one frequency. This has all frequencies. Let me just uh, turn on the pink noise and uh, give you an idea of what it sounds like. Now to, uh, uh, to operate or to provide the pink noise signal, I'm using this fancy little thing known as a noise plug. And it has an XLR input. This uh, input combo jack also will take a uh, quarter inch input. So you can use either XLR or quarter inch, meaning you could use a pickup or a microphone. So let's uh, look at some of the functions and listen to some of the functions. We'll start with uh, the microphone input. And uh, when we turn on the pink noise, we do it by turning on phantom power. There is an attenuation switch, which will reduce the level of the signal in the mic channel. We've got level control. It's a bass control. You'll hear, as I boost the bass, you hear the bass frequencies come up in volume go down in volume as I reduce the bass. Mid frequencies, up and down. Treble, up and down. Uh, this uh, two-channel lamp has a second identical channel with the combo jack input and the controls that we just discussed. There's a section for an effects loop. This is a parallel effects loop that allows you to inject a signal from an effects pedal or from another signal source like a, an iPod. Uh, the input level is controlled using this effects level control. Uh, you, you output from the send jack into the effects pedal and input from the effects pedal into the return. As I said, you can also use the return as a uh, another signal input. And you can use the send as a signal output, say, to a tuner. The uh, uh, effects loop is a parallel loop, and so you're not interrupting the signal when you plug into either one of these jacks. You're just plugging in in parallel. Another feature the amp has on a per-channel basis is a, uh, a filter plus uh, phase invert function. The phase invert function uh, reverses the phase of the signal, and this is helpful in feedback control. So if you're uh, using a microphone and you hit this uh, phase invert switch, that will reduce the, the uh, amplitude at your position, 
which can reduce feedback. This phase inverse switch is also very useful in two-channel systems because you might be inputting signal sources that are out of phase. If they're out of phase, they will cancel each other. Uh, by inverting one channel with respect to the other channel, you'll be able to uh, get rid of that out of phase condition. That can be very useful if you're using two pickups on the same instrument, as a for instance. Second function here is a low cut filter, and let me demonstrate it with the uh, pink noise. So when we implement, we plug, when we, when we start the filter, we, we uh, push the switch in. This is a variable frequency cutoff. As I raise the frequency, you hear very little effect, but then as I get up to around three or 400 hertz, you hear the low frequencies go away. This is a useful function for uh, controlling boominess in a room. It's kind of like a scalpel compared to the axe that is the uh, uh, base control. So this allows you finer control, uh, removing less frequencies uh, as, as required for your particular situation. We also have an effects section. Let me demonstrate that with pink noise. We'll turn the pink noise back on. Turn on the uh, effects in channel one, set it for the hall reverb, turn up the effects level, and when I turn off the signal, you hear the uh, uh, hall reverb. Let's do the same thing with a room reverb. You hear the much shorter room. Let's uh, use the delay function to give you an idea of what that sounds like. And finally, the flange. Probably will find that to be much less useful. And then lastly, we have uh, uh, a direct out with uh, uh, functions that control the ground lift for the direct out. There's a switch, an on-off switch for that. That's useful if you are uh, uh, driving a long cable to a mixing board and have uh, a ground hum. By lifting the ground at this end, you might be able to eliminate that hum. And uh, uh, if you would prefer to have no EQ on the signal going to the direct out, you would put this switch in the pre-EQ position, which is up. And if you want your EQ settings sent to the mixing board, you push the switch down and that turns on the post EQ. We also have a mute function, which mutes the whole amplifier. That's useful if you're uh, trying to uh, tune up on stage and you don't want uh, people to hear you. Uh, that button is red, and it's red so that uh, if you're not getting any sound out of the amplifier, you will check and see if the mute button is on. For the two-channel amp, there's a second function, which is the channel two on-off switch. That can be useful if you're uh, doubling and you want to just turn off one channel and leave, uh, leave the instrument plugged into, say, channel two. Uh, there's a master level control and a, uh, an input level control. Typically, we set the master level control at 12 o'clock, start with the input level at zero, Turn on your signal and then turn off the effects. Use the input level to control the signal. These two are independent of each other and, and uh, uh, it, it gives you another option. It turns out that the direct out is not affected by the master level control. It's only affected by the uh, input level control. So you, if you're using this as a stage monitor, and you need more volume on stage, you can turn up the master volume without affecting what's been sent to the house.